Great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is James Kukuka. Uh, today I'll be presenting our work, uh, Confetti Amplifying Concolic Guidance for Fuzzers. So a bit of motivation, um, as we all know, uh, software is at the core of Software is at the core of a lot of uh, critical electronic components, including uh, pretty famously in the US uh, a couple of years ago, um, there's a uh, credit reporting company called Equifax. And if you recall, there was a huge breach uh, of their uh, web application uh, and their systems uh, caused by a code injection vulnerability in Java. Uh, so this can lead to disastrous effects. In that case, it, it led to the uh, disclosure of millions of Americans financial data. Um, and more recently, there was the, the these high profile log for day vulnerabilities discovered in 2021 that exposed nearly a third of all web servers on the internet to serious security and availability concerns. And one of these is shown in this slide. Um, it's a function that's subject to an infinite recursion. Uh, which results in that stack overflow that you see. And it's a latent vulnerability deep within application logic within log, log4j that traditional unit testing didn't catch. Um, so therefore, it kind of behooves developers to find automated means of detecting these sort of latent vulnerabilities and generating inputs to these programs that actuate uh, these latent bugs. So the most widely used sort of um, approach to finding bugs in applications just at scale is gray box fuzzing. Um, I'm not going to go too into this because you're all probably familiar, but modern gray box fuzzers such as AFL and libfuzzer, to name a few, target native binaries, and they're pretty good at finding bugs in syntactic parsing, kind of shallow bugs, but not necessarily logics in logic stages beyond that point. That is, they don't necessarily produce many syntactically valid inputs that would actuate vulnerabilities that you saw in the previous slide. Well, in the diagram, you can see a depiction of such a fuzzer. Um, it chooses, a, in this case, a concrete XML file, either from a seed or from some queue based on coverage instrumentation, and it mutates it in some way. In this example, you see we insert a caret character um, into the original input, and it gets caught within the syntactic parser, and the system under test may uh, reject the bug, or may reject the input, or reveal a bug. Um, so parametric fuzzers are kind of the state of the art when it comes to fuzzing for latent bugs within application logic. Parametric fuzzers make use of generator functions, uh, which come from property-based testing, and they generate an input according to some developer-specified pre- and post-conditions. With a generator program, you have more freedom and flexibility to take context and semantic rules into account. Uh, generator programs can be thought of as a series of decisions in the construction of some sort of concrete input. So this could be something like choosing the number of levels in an XML document, choosing a random string tag, um, et cetera. And you can therefore encode these decisions as a series of bits or bytes. And these encoded decisions as an input to a generator function are known as parametric inputs. Parametric fuzzer mutate parametric inputs, these series of encoded decisions, and in doing so, they abstract the mutations away from the concrete bytes of the input to the um, you know, decisions made to create that input in the first place. So an example here, let's say we have some seed, it's a, it's a bunch of bits, 0, 0, 0, 1. We mutate that value to 0, 0, 1, 1, and as a result, we feed it into our generate XML function, and it spits out a new XML document that now has a, a name tag and some random value. And this concrete input is nearly guaranteed to pass syntactic parsing with high probability as long as the generator is written to spec and then exercises the application logic of system under test, potentially revealing bugs. So Confetti is our system that builds upon this current state of the art to amplify Concolic's guidance for fuzzers of JVM software. It generates complex and tactically valid inputs and also satisfies semantic and contextual constraints. Um, and it's obviously written in Java and scales to real world programs. So the three main components of Confetti are, as I said, the state of the art parametric fuzzing, targeted hinting, which is a mechanism that we define um, as typically what you come to expect of concolic execution tools like a mind gray box fuzzing, um, taking certain values and placing them at specific values in the input as a result of some white box analysis, such as concolic execution and taint tracking. And then a novel concept that we've dubbed global hinting, a new means of guidance that applies specific values ascertained from white box analysis um, at runtime 
and then we apply those pseudo randomly anywhere in the input. So as I said, targeted hinting is a major aspect of confetti. So I'll show how we utilize that on a specific code snippet. Targeted hinting is extremely powerful and it's used in prior art uh, uh, that are hybrid fuzzers such as Angora, which you may have heard of. But when combined with global hinting, we get even more uh, coverage and bugs out of, out of these um, out of our benchmark programs. And I'll discuss global hinting a little bit later in the talk. But let's consider the code example on the right. It's a piece of code that just processes X and all inputs. And an example generator is found on the left. Um, recall that a generator is basically just a series of decisions, and we can encode that as a parametric input. The decision points are highlighted in the various colors, so you see the, the function generate string, generate boolean. Um, we can just think of these as black box functions for now that take a parametric byte string and then spit out some corresponding data type. And I've highlighted those in the same color, uh, both as the parametric input and uh, the concrete input uh, that results. So initially a generator is gonna create some random parametric input, the initial seed, uh, that's input number one that selects the string group ID and the random Boolean false. Uh, and being the first input of the fuzzing run, this is guaranteed to obtain new coverage. Um, and then that will be sent to our system for further white box analysis. Um, the parametric fuzzer continuously generates new inputs that may or may not reveal new coverage. This is an example of mutation. We now have a different string in the initial generate string. It's a package. Um, and that yields no new coverage. So it's not considered interesting by our system standard. Uh, so we're not gonna perform any white box analysis on it. So let's continue. Once the fuzzer decides to mutate a new input, it's gonna consult our system for hints, whether targeted or global. Uh, and when confetti, re and then confetti returns this in the form of a modified uh, parametric input um, derived from the first input. So this hints that the first generated string should be expected. With the hint, input number three results on new coverage. In new coverage, input number three is then sent for further white box analysis. Meanwhile, the fuzzer inputs input three to input four by changing the Boolean choice to true, just so happens to, followed by a random string for an attribute name and value. Uh, input four results in new coverage on line seven and eight and is sent for further white box analysis. And then finally, input five is generated in a similar manner to input three using Confetti's hint mechanism for strings by instrumenting our call, the call to get adder. It gets the hint version. While the parametric fuzzer could, in theory, generate this input, perhaps if you scrape the string version um, ahead of time, uh, it could get it in theory, but uh, with Confetti's targeted hinting mechanism, it becomes a certainty. And this is the power of, obviously, uh, concolic execution here. And one major benefit of gray box fuzzers, whether it be parametric or otherwise, is their speed. Um, confetti is designed in such a way that we leverage the speed and don't hinder it. So the gray box fuzzer portion of confetti is its own process and it constantly generates inputs um, and executing the system under test. And then we have a separate process called the confetti coordinator and it receives interesting inputs and then delegates work to our white box analysis platform, NAR, which is its own separate process. NAR uh, performs uh, taint tracking and we've, and we've extended it therefore um, to build constraints um, and path conditions, which it sends back to the confetti coordinator process. The confetti coordinator process is then lever able to leverage an SMT solver uh, to solve for new inputs and or send new, these new inputs and um, targeted hints or global hints, which I'm going to describe in a moment, back to the gray box fuzzer. Uh, this loop happens at the same time that the gray box fuzzer is running. Uh, so it allows Confetti to take advantage of the speed of the gray box fuzzer while also uh, performing white box analysis. Uh, NAR taints parametric byte inputs with minimal changes to the underlying generator functions. Uh, strings are tainted at the character level and various string operations are instrumented, uh, such as equals, starts with, etc. Uh, NAR's taint tags are complete symbolic expressions, which are concatenated as the tag is propagated across branches. Um, and in this way, NAR facilitates concolic execution with the ability to scale without the complexity of implementing a symbolic execution environment uh, for complex um, operations in the JVM. And then the confetti coordinator, excuse me, ingests NAR's constraints 
and uses Z3 to solve for new inputs by negating constraints of various uh, branch points. Um, namely, if that branch point corresponds to some portion of the parametric byte input. We found that this was useful for points where the fuzzer gets stuck um, and it's user configurable with a timeout to cut down on wasted uh, solving time. Uh, but there's a missing piece. Um, NARS symbolic expressions help with something called global hinting, as I've been referencing throughout this presentation. Uh, targeted hinting is powerful, but this missing piece occurs. Taint tracking can only be used to guide the fuzzer to explore branches for which there's a data flow relationship between the input bytes and the, and the branch predicate. So let's consider the code example in this slide, in which the input strings S1 and S2 are compared against some magic values, ABC and then uh, ABC DEF. Um, and then that, those comparisons are stored in a Boolean variable. The Tain tracking tool won't report any relationship between the input and the branch on line four, because V1 is control dependent on S1, but not data dependent. And a similar um, relationship between, exists between S2 and V2. And even worse, in this example, there's a data flow relationship between the strings S1 and S2 and the magic strings ABC and ABCDEF. But in real code, we found that uh, tain tags on S1 or S2 uh, might also be lost through implicit flows throughout the code. So what can we do to help this, the fuzzer cover line four? A common approach uh, may be to scrape the uh, source code uh, for all strings that may occur statically within it creating some sort of static dictionary and pulling strings from there. And this is only going to work if the magic values are statically defined in the code base. Values generated dynamically will not be included in a dictionary. So the string ABCDEF in this case won't actually um, be able to be scraped. This makes reaching line five with only these strings infeasible. But global hinting comes from the key insight that although taint tags might be lost, for parts of an input, magic values derived for other parts of an input can be saved and retargeted and applied elsewhere. So Confetti's white box analysis may discover the magic value ABCDEF when constructing a path condition in for S2 in the code snippet. And then Confetti saves this magic value in a dynamic set that we call global hints to be applied elsewhere in the input. And within the parametric generators, we can add another choice now uh, of whether or not to use a global hint instead of one from some sort of static dictionary we have or some other means of generating a string and mutating the bytes within a parametric input that control these decision points of whether or not to use a global hint determines when and where they may, they may or may not be used. So eventually line five can be covered. As stated, Confetti seeks to provide better guidance to fuzzers not to perform pure symbolic execution. And when the fuzzer mutates, it can choose to provide targeted hints or global hints. Regardless of what it chooses, hints propagate to new generations of inputs. And the hint inheritance allows for, and stacking allows for more complex inputs to be generated. So we evaluated Confetti's branch coverage and bug finding capabilities across a suite of benchmark programs uh, when compared to a state-of-the-art parametric fuzzer Zest, which Confetti is actually built upon as well as a version of Confetti that only uses traditional uh, targeted hints. Um, in the benchmark programs we evaluate were Apache Ant, vCell, and Maven, Google's uh, JavaScript compiler Clojure, and Mozilla Rhino. And we found that Confetti covers more branches across most benchmark programs. Additionally, it finds 15 previously unreported bugs, nine of which were unable to be found by either baseline. Um, and by conducting a post-mortem analysis of, of Confetti's execution, we determined that global hinting was at least as effective at revealing new coverage as traditional targeted hinting. We also sought to measure the repeatability of Confetti's bug finding capabilities. So uh, across 20 repetitions of 24 hour runs and the heat maps on the slide, red cells indicate Little to no repeatability and green cells indicate high repeatability. And at a glance, we can see that confetti with target and end global hints tends to have greater or equal repeatability of bugs across all target programs. There are, of course, some exceptions to this. Um, there are some bugs that confetti with targeted hinting and zest find quite often, whereas confetti with global hints does not. And we attribute this um, to sometimes, depending on the bug, 
global hinting hinders um, the ability to find it um, just by sheer probability or depending on the idiosyncrasies of the bug. And sometimes it pays off, as in the case of bugs C6, C14, and C15, um, it, it pays off in their detection. Uh, you can find a more in-depth discussion of our evaluation and these results in our paper. Um, our evaluation, all data and confetti are archived and open source. So feel free to check it out. And as John indicated uh, yesterday in his poster presentation, um, our GitHub uh, our GitHub repository has a continuous integration workflow. We use this um, to basically perform our evaluation for confetti. We were able to rapidly deploy um, sets of uh, 24 hour runs for all benchmark programs using this. So feel free to check that out as well. Um, so in summary, Confetti is a concolic guided fuzzer for JVM software, uh, and it leverages both targeted hinting and a new global hinting strategy to generate complex inputs that reveal more, more branch coverage and uh, detect more bugs than existing state-of-the-art JVM fuzzers. Through our empirical studies, we've identified that Confetti's global hinting mechanism yields a significant improvement in coverage as well as um, bug finding than targeted hinting. And we hope that our open source release of Confetti and its CI workflow uh, will help support the growing community of practitioners and researchers engaged in fuzzing JVM software. And that's all I have. Thank you for uh, your attention.